record this and good morning everybody it's so wonderful to see all of you some of you are not on video but i would love to see your beautiful faces so if you could turn on your video that will be great okay so how was your weekend hi georg how are you good to see you hi madison hello savannah lovely to see all of your beautiful faces this morning did you all have a good weekend yes yes very nice so yes. today we have a lot to cover okay so last week we we're discussing all the different artists and we did a few paintings we started a few paintings we didn't really finish it but you have to finish it all, you know on your own time which is very nice so today i'm going to talk about um, Monet, oscar claude Monet. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Can everybody see this? No. No, not yet. No. Share screen. No. There we go. Share. All right. Yeah. Now can you see it? Yeah. So yes. you see, there's a Monet painting in the background, kind of. Uh, that was my. Yes. It is not finished yet i have to paint this side of the painting still but this was my attempt to copy one of his water lily paintings. so today we're going to try to attempt to do this painting but in acrylic paint we haven't used acrylic paints right so one of the things that i would like for you to uh, know about monet who is monet monet was a french impressionist painter I think I call him a master of illusion. So it was like he would paint, but it was just like an impression of something. So it was uh, the way he painted, he developed his painting in layers. And he, uh, uh, at first people thought it was, it was nothing. They used to you know, really ridicule him for his style of painting. And then um, the name impressionist, Okay, came from his first painting that got rejected. It was called Impression Sunrise. And people made fun of him and, um, you know, but the name stuck, you know, because when uh, he submitted the painting for an exhibition, they said, oh, what, what, um, uh, what, what, what should we call this? And he said, Impression Sunrise. And so um, that name stuck. And so he's, he's the founder of Impressionist impressionist um, paintings okay he was born on 14th november 1840 in giverny france he spent time in normandy paris algeria uh, where he was posted he was in the army and then england and Mexico. i'm going to try to mute all of you so that we don't get background noise all right so um Let's see, and then he died at the age of 86 um, in December. So the last about 20 to 25 years of his life, he couldn't see very well, but he still continued to paint. So we'll, we'll look at some of, uh, some of his paintings, okay? Uh, let's look at, where did he get educated? So he went and attended the Lee Havre School of the Arts, his mentors were Jacques Francois Orchard and Eugene Baudin. Uh, so this guy, uh, Baudin, uh, taught him how to paint outside. So I'm going to teach you a new word. It's called en plein air, outside in the open. Okay, en plein air is a French term, and uh, Baudin taught uh, Monet to paint outside. And Monet painted a lot of the same things but the difference was that he painted the same scenes many many times but in different sunlight like sometimes it would be dark sometimes it would be cloudy sometimes it would be dark and he would go out there in the open and he loved painting outdoors so that's on plein air okay let's look at some of his famous paintings this one is uh, of his wife and his son. This is Madame Monet. So this is called Woman 
with a parasol. Parasol means umbrella. So what do you see over here in this painting? Okay, what do you see in uh, his impressionist painting is that he doesn't put a lot of effort into trying to give you uh, like you know exact copies of what the parasol should look like, or what this person's face should look like, or what this clouds were like. But then he painted with reckless abandon. Like he would take his big paintbrush and just paint stuff. When it started, it looked very chaotic. And then over so many layers, he would develop the effects of light. So you see? So here's the shadow, how he developed the shadows of the painting. There's his son and, and his wife. And that's um, it's not in view, like it's probably in a private collection. Now this is water lilies. Water lilies or nymphaeas as they were called, is Claude Monet did over 250 paintings and they are there all over the world. Some of the paintings are huge, like it's a huge canvas and it's, um, and some of them are housed in the La Orangerie in um, Paris and they are just, you know, that those paintings, those large paintings were when he, his eyesight was really uh, deteriorating. His eyesight was deteriorating because he had cataracts. So for a painter, for, for a painter, if he can't see color, that's really brutal, isn't it? So uh, during that time, he painted a lot of the very, very large paintings. Some of the water lily paintings sold for very much money. One of them sold for over $80 million. So for, for someone who was ridiculed in the beginning, $80 million for a single painting is not such a bad idea, right? So in during his day, he started selling his paintings for about a thousand francs, which was uh, a lot of money those days, okay? It, so from eight, so it says the water lilies were painted between 1896 and 1926, right? So he painted over 250 paintings of them. Here is uh, Women in the Garden. It's, uh, you can see it, it was painted in 1866 and it's pre present in the Musée de Orsay. It's a hundred inch by 80 inches. So it's a large painting. So his, his partner Camille, she posed for all these figures. So he'd draw one figure, then he would make her sit in another position and draw another one, and then another one. So, um, so when, uh, when this painting was done, people really said, oh, this is so ridiculous. Um, I mean, you know, they ridiculed this painting uh, when it was first uh, unveiled. Now here is a very simple subject, it looks like a haystack and it is a haystack. It used to, you know, they used to store grains in it and so forth. And the haystacks would stay in the farms over the year, you know, from the, uh, so what he did was he painted oh, over 25 of them, I think. And he painted them in different lights, like whether it was during the day, during the night, during like early morning hours, but he painted 25 paintings of, um, uh, of the haystacks. And uh, these paintings are present all over the world, different pe people, okay? But once he painted the haystacks, they started selling like hotcakes. And people paid a lot of money for these simple uh, paintings. And then, because he started getting all this money, he bought his, his home, his home and his gardens. And he paid the cash right out and bought this home that he lived in for the rest of his life, okay, in Giverny. Let's go to the next painting. This is the House of Parliament. Um, this is the Palace of Westminster, which is home to the British Parliament. There are, he did about 19 paintings. This particular one is in the National Gallery of Art in DC. And like I said, he painted the same subjects over and over again, right? So. I don't know, he just, uh, he just loved to play with the effects that light had. And see, it's just an impression. It is not an exact rendition of the building. It's just like a 
nice little impression of a painting, right? So let's look at the painting that got the name. This is Impressions Sunrise, okay? Uh, so this was presented in 1874 in an exhibition. And one very amazing thing about this painting is that it was stolen in 1985. And then it was brought back to the museum. I mean, they, uh, they found it in 1990, but then they brought it back in 1991 to the museum. So when, uh, when they put it in the museum for an exhibition, they asked him, okay, what, uh, what do you call it? This is actually the port from a window of a hotel that he was painting this. But you see, it's, it's only a suggestion of a painting, right? So he said, okay, just call it Impressions Sunrise. That's how the term Impressionism was coined by this painting because he called it Impression Sunrise. It's like one of those last minute things when you send, send a paper painting in to exhibit and then the exhibitors will ask you, okay, what's the name of the painting again? And then he just winged it and he said, okay, it's Impression Sunrise because he couldn't call it the port or of, uh, you know, and he just said, just call it Impression Sunrise. Look at how he put in these, like these marks on the painting is just, you know, very broad brush strokes. And then the reflection of the sun that has just risen. And there, there's the reflection of the sunrise. I think it's a pretty painting. Now let's move on to uh, this one right here. This is the beach in Portville, okay? So again, the uh, story about this painting is that it was stolen uh, by someone, I forget the name of the person who stole it, but he stole this painting, the original, and then put like a cardboard of the same painting that he painted and took the real painting and took it away. So that was, that happened in 2000. It took them 10 years to re, uh, get this painting back, okay? So in 2010, they got this painting back. That's amazing. And then here is another um, uh, uh, painting of his. It's a very impressionistic painting. So there's nothing very detailed about this, you know? He's showing the sunrise and the reflection. Um, and it is, um, this painting is present in the National Museum of Cardiff. Um, and he, this is in Venice. It's called San Giorgio at the Maggiore at dusk. Okay. And uh, it's a two feet by two feet by three feet painting. It's rather large. But then when he was in Venice, he didn't paint Venice too much. He said, Venice is too beautiful to paint. So I'm not going to paint it. So he didn't do too many paintings there. This, I think, is a very sweet painting. I love it. I love it because it's, it's a train station. Believe it or not, these train stations look the same almost even to this day, except people are different. You know, people dressed uh, are, are differently. They are differently dressed. But these large uh, railway stations with these large big domes, they still exist. And look at how beautifully he painted the smoke, you know? So this is the arrival of the Normandy train. And this, is, this painting is present in the um, Art Institute of Chicago. So he painted about 12 paintings. And this station is the St. Lazare station in Paris. So he, uh, he painted about 12 of these scenes. Okay. Let me unmute all of you and see if you have any questions. Does anybody have any questions, any impressions? What do you think? Do you like his paintings? This painting looks like a 3D. Yes, it does look like 3D. You're right about that. And that's because of the way he's layered. Beautifully, beautifully done. Thank you. The year yes. Three, three yes. So, like he's done this in. Uh, I mean, I would love to do this painting. Uh, so anyway, you two all. So uh, let's move on, and uh, 
Let's go to the next painting. This one um, is a painting of Camille Monet on a garden bench. He painted a lot of uh, paintings of his gardens. He loved his gardens. And here is Camille. Uh, she had just received news that her father died. So she's not very happy, is she? Looks kind of sad, like over here. So this, this painting was done just before she um, was given the news that her father had passed away. So Camille Monet on a garden bench, it is present. Uh, you can see this painting at the Met in New York City. It was painted in 1873. Okay, let's move on to the next painting. Uh, these are one of his very famous uh, paintings. So, you know, when he uh, sold his hay haystacks and he got all this money and he bought his house, he immediately went to work on the pond, which part of the river um, there uh, that goes close by to his house. And he constructed this pond and he made this bridge and he painted like many, many paintings, like 250 such paintings of the water lilies. He was obsessed with it. So about the last 25 to 30 years of his life, he did not go too far from his home, okay? He just went within two miles of his home and all, and he painted within two miles of his home. Isn't that a curious thought? He didn't go out to fancy places to paint. He painted what was in his home, around his home, and so forth. But he was a very prolific painter. Painted a lot, a lot. He was a very prolific painter, okay? Now this one, uh, Monet spent his summers here. It's called The Garden at Saint Address. It was painted in 1867. You can see it at the Met in New York City. Here in this painting, it's gorgeous. The setting is so beautiful. So who he painted here, this is his dad. See in this little hat, that's his dad. And then over here, these people may, may have been his relatives. So he would, he would spend a lot of time, you know, uh, going to these different places. And uh, these are his earlier paintings, so they are very colorful. His later paintings are not as colorful, okay? Here's another painting. This was done in 1873. It's uh, present in the Musée d'Orsay. And uh, he did poppy fields near Argentuil. Now the poppy fields, again, he's not painting every single poppy. I've done a poppy field painting, but I have painted every single poppy as though they are real, as though they are real things. I didn't make it abstract. I didn't make it like an uh, impression. Over here, if you look at the clouds even, it's very impressionistic. Even the trees are very impressionistic. There's an impression of a person to people here, and probably this was his wife and his son. And there's that little house. It's all an impression. And remember, he signed his paintings. He signed, sometimes he signed it, his whole name. Sometimes he just signed it as Monet. So that's Poppy Fields near Argentina. Okay. This painting here was um, painted from a boat. So what, what did he do? He sat in a boat. He took his, he took his entire collection of like, um, paints and brushes and canvases onto the boat and so made a studio on the boat. And then he painted this morning on the Seine um, uh, near Giverny in 1897 from the boat, okay? So that's, uh, and he painted about 15 of these types of painting. So let's think about how some of, some of the things that pop up to us, okay? When you look at the old masters, like from Vinci's time and so forth, they could not really go out late. Like they painted, they used mostly rounded brushes. Okay? Whereas Monet, during Monet's time, uh, what happened was they these metal ferrules, okay? Because of that, they could make point, flat brushes. See, this brush is really flat. You see? So with that, he could just take it and just paint with it. And he used very broad brush strokes and big brushes, sometimes little brushes, 
and uh, got this. And during this time, during the 1800s, paint also came in tubes, metal tubes, okay? Before that, the painters had to use pigments from different sources. Then they would have to mix the pigments with oil and, and things like that, make their own paint. Whereas during Monet's time now, you could get these paints in paint tubes. And so it was easy for them to go out and paint. And, um, you know, so all these things, and he loved painting outdoors. Just amazing. He just loved the outdoors. Let's look at some of his famous quotes. Okay. Monet said, I must have flowers always and always. So he just loved flowers. I've had the pleasure to visit his garden in Giverny. And it's just, you know, a gorgeous garden. And they maintain it to this day for, uh, in the way that Monet would have maintained it a long time ago when he was alive. Okay. And then he also said, color is my day long obsession joy and torment okay so uh, he was just fascinated by color so when he was turning sort of you know when the cataracts in his eyes happened around the 1890s it must have been very difficult for him right so i'm going to send you an email of a person who uh explains what color might look with the cataracts in his eye so look out for that and um, make sure you go and uh, you know click on that link and you know understand what he's um, what it might have been. I thought it was really nice, nicely explained. And then he said, "My garden is my be most beautiful masterpiece." Imagine a painter telling that. You know, I mean, he didn't call any of his paintings a masterpiece. He said that. His garden was his most beautiful masterpiece. So you can imagine how much time and effort he made, you know, in, uh, and he put in his garden. He really thought about it. He really understood his flowers and so forth, okay? And then he said, I would love to paint the way a bird sings. How pretty is that? Like, I would love to paint the way a bird sings. And then he also said, and this is very applicable to all of us, young and old, okay? It's, he said, the more I live, the more I regret how little I know, right? So that means that the longer you live, like I, I have lived a long life, I'm 60 years old, you know, and I feel that, oh my God, there's so much to learn. There is so much to learn, even this act of, teaching you guys these uh, you know about all these masters it's a learning lesson for me because i had to go in and research everything and try to come up with a lesson plan that all of you can understand whether you're eight years old or you're 80 years old you know i just want to introduce you to these wonderful painters and a little bit give you a snippet in the in their lives and then teach you just a little on how to paint you know how how they painted you know i may not be able to do much but a little bit of it okay so the more i live the more i regret how little i know so for all your little ones out there i want you to keep learning okay keep learning it doesn't matter what you are interested in but just keep learning and then he said i can only draw what i see okay so his little impressions drawing or what he saw so if you think about it, if you go and see a Monet painting, it would be what he saw over a hundred years ago, you know? So it's a, it's a window into his life. Paintings are a window into what the painters did during those times. And then he also said, never, even as a child, would I bend a rule. Now, that's a very, very good boy, isn't it? I always bend rules. I'm not a very good person, but no, I am actually. But you can bend rules. It doesn't make you really bad, a, really a bad person. But he was just a florist, I think. He just was just a good boy and a good person. And he said, never even as a child would I bend rules. And then the most important of all, light is the most important person in a picture. 
he made light a person who does that like so he gave so much importance to light like you know that's why he painted these things he was obsessed about painting different things and you know one story that really jumps out to me is that he would love to paint out in the in the open but then he couldn't capture a particular light so he would have to get a different painting started on a different canvas so his stepdaughter would always bring him all these canvases in a little wheelbarrow because he would keep changing from one painting to another because the 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 you know because the sun rises and then it sets and then the light changes if you go out in your garden sometime go go ahead and paint your house okay just the varied ways that the with the morning sun to the evening sun to the afternoon sun you will find that your house looks very different okay so that's what money did and he was obsessed with it it was just funny anyway so today i'm going to tell you a little bit about your brushes okay the smallest brush is 20 by 0 and the largest 30 and so on most commonly the brush sizes that i used are 000 to 20 okay so 000 is like really tiny so here and then about to 20 a, lot, a little bit larger so what are the different parts of the brush okay let's look at the brush i will bring you a bigger brush look at this brush right the different parts of the brush are here are the bristles these right here bristles this is the ferrule this is the handle right this handle could be wood it could be plastic it could be coated plastic like this brush is and the ferrule in the 1800s it became metallic so now you can get like flat brushes okay so that's the parts of the brush now look at the different types of brushes so let me see All right, these are a lot of brushes that you got in your kit. Okay, so let's look at the round brushes. This would be a round brush. See, this is a round brush, right? Flat brush, this would be a flat brush. Okay, brights. Brights are shorter than the flats. So here's a bright, here's a flat. Okay, and then let's see, a fan brush. Wow, look at that. This is a fan brush. This is used to make trees and such. A nice little fan brush, okay? And then the angle brush. This would be, uh, let's see if there's an angle brush in here. This is kind of like an angle or a dagger brush, okay? Then there are mop brushes. Here's a mop brush. You can just mop like a mop and so forth okay there's a stippler there's a liner here here's a liner and so forth okay let's move on let me show you i have given you this this reference right here i want you to go home and you know take that reference and look at it because this gentleman explains the paint brushes really well so uh the reference material is taken from that particular um, reference so here's a crown brush this is a flat. Look at the bright, it's shorter than the flat. Here's a filbert. Okay, let me see if I have a filbert in here. Yep, this is a filbert. See how it's rounded on the top? That's a filbert. Here's a filbert. Here's a fan brush and the dagger, like I showed you before, I think. Where is the dagger here? This is a dagger. Then the mop brush and a rigger. All right, so that's about the brushes. So watercolor brushes are usually made out of sable or synthetic sable or nylon. Sable is basically an animal, okay? And they would make, but it, these, these brushes are very expensive, very expensive. Oil painting brushes, again, are made up of sable or bristle. Acrylic brushes are made mostly made up of nylon or synthetic. All this is synthetic nylon stuff. That's why they are cheap, okay? 
any type of turpentine or thinners, which I don't have, okay, those can destroy these synthetic brushes. In your kit, we don't have any turpentine or, or you know, oil paints. We have oil pastels, but we don't have that. Okay, let's see. I'm going to unmute you all. Let me, um, let, do you guys have any questions? I see that, well, you discovered your fan brush. That's good. Show me your fan brush. There you go. You like that brush, don't you? Good. All right. Any questions, anybody? Yes, what's the way? Will, go ahead and ask your question. Yep, you see the different brushes, daggers and, yeah. All right. I just have a comment. You know the bridge you showed the painting? Yes. It looks so beautiful on, on in the painting. Yes. But we went to see that. It is just a small bridge there over a like a little creek. Yes, I know. I know. It is, it is. But we let's go back to that painting now that you tell me, okay? I mean it was it is nice. Flowers were nice, everything. Look at, look at this painting now that you brought it up. Looks okay. beautiful. Yes. But what did he do? He only painted just that bridge. So in this big piece of canvas, he only painted that tiny little bridge. So it looks really big, right? But yes. it's, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, I've been there too. And it's just like, you know, it's, I love gardens, as you know. I am a gardener by heart. I mean, I'm always in the garden watering my plants. And this weather is killing my flowers but I water it like crazy. And he spent a ton of time in his garden. And even though it's a teeny tiny little bridge, but it is just like what he has done, he's, he's just painted it. Oh yeah, he has done it beautifully. Beautifully. Sometimes he only paints this portion, just the water lilies. And it looks like an upside down painting because you know, uh, he just painted the water lilies. I'm so glad you mentioned that. So anyway, I'm going to mute Paul again. Uh, let's move on to a little bit of color theory. I am not able to teach you a ton of color theory. But what is color theory? It really is a collection of rules and guidelines to communicate appealing color schemes, okay? So when you paint, you know, try to follow these little rules of the color theory. Like if you look at the color wheel, this is this is what a color wheel is. It is based on three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, R, Y, B. So red, yellow, and blue. These are the three primary colors, okay? Now let's see how you develop it. So who developed it? In, nine, in 1666, the color wheel was developed by Sir Isaac Newton. He was a scientist and he developed this color theory. So the primary colors are the red, blues, and yellows. And then if you mix yellow and red, you get an orange. That's the secondary color. You mix blue and yellow, you get green. That's a secondary color. Again, you mix blue and red, you get a purple. So that's a secondary color. What's a tertiary color? If you mix red and orange, whatever happens in there, which is a red orange or a yellow orange, or a yellowish green, or a blue green, or a purple green, those are tertiary colors, okay? So that's, the, uh, that's a little bit of information about the color wheel. Then I wanna to talk to you a little bit about color temperatures. There are cool colors, okay? And there are warm colors. Cool colors are red, orange, and yellow. Warm colors are green, blue and purple. Neutrals are your blacks, your whites, your grays, your tans, your browns. We all know, okay? Neutral colors, all right? So let's look at uh, the color models. For those of you who are into computers, you will know that the RGB, which is the red, green, and blue, these apply to computers, TVs, and electronics. But the CMYK, this is the color scheme used, like if you went to a painter and they were going to print your painting, they're going to use the CMYK, okay? The cyan, magenta, yellow. This applies to 
painting and printing. So these are your color models. Then we want to talk about color properties. I'm going through this really fast because I want to show, take you through a painting today. Okay, let's paint the uh, watercolors, water lilies of, um, us, of Claude Monet. So the color properties like hues, like how does it appear? That's a hue. Okay, a chroma is how pure is the color? Okay, you can uh, make it lighter by adding say white, or you can make it darker by adding a black, or you can make a gray, like you can add a gray tone, so it becomes less like a pastel color. So supposing you take a red okay, and you add a white to it, it becomes rather pink. However, you, you take a, a red and you add a black to it, it becomes a darker version of a red. But then like, and, uh, and then if you add it, say a gray color and you add it like a little bit of black and white makes gray, then you add it to the color, adding the gray to the color tone makes it less pastel, less pinkish, okay? And what is color harmony? Color harmony, harmony is like how beautiful everything looks when you put it together. Color arm, harmony is how you arrange colors so they are pleasing to the eye. That's what color harmony is. Okay? There's a lot more to study about this, but for now, this should suffice. Now let's look at Monet's color palette. Monet used very few colors, okay? He used, in his time, he used lead white, but we, we all know now that lead is toxic to your body. So they replaced lead with titanium. So what we now get is titanium white. We have cadmium yellow. You should be careful with around cadmium yellow. It can be um, bad for you. Viridian green, emerald green. See, emerald green he loved, you know, he just uses this emerald green in his paintings a lot. Then he uses French ultramarine and cobalt blue and madder red, vermilion, which is a type of red, and ivory black. But towards the end of his life, you know, uh, towards the later part of his life, I won't say towards the end of his life, he completely got rid of ivory black too. Okay? So this is his limited color palette. He would just go with these few colors in his pocket and his brushes and his canvases that were either on like, you know, stretched canvases and he would take off and start painting. So you can paint like, these are my photographs. I, I photographed these, this is in Hawaii from my hotel window, <laughs> like Monet. I mean, now that I know that Monet painted a lot from his hotel window, this is from my hotel window and it's, it's, uh, it's beautiful. So how do we paint this like Monet? We'll have to figure that out. I will try to paint some of these scenes. Here's another scene, Hawaii again, Hawaii again. And this is my home. This is my backyard, see? And uh, I put in this bridge cause I, you know, we have a creek, a little creek flowing through there. And I uh, designed this creek so that it had some movement to it. And um, it's just gorgeous. So all these flowers were planted by me. I love my garden. And here is another uh, painting that, this is Stubbs Park, believe it or not. Stubbs Park. And this one too is Stubbs Park here in Centerville, Ohio. Okay, you can paint this um, in a Monet style painting. All right. So let's look at uh, the painting in the background. This painting over here, is by me, Water Lilies of Monet by Hyacinth Paul. And today we're going to do Water Lilies right here uh, by Monet, but it'll be by Will and Crame and Javits and Rose and Brejuan and so on, okay? So let's begin. We have about 20 minutes. Let's see if we can finish it. So here is something that I did before. It's uh, one of your boards, the eight by 10 canvas board, okay? And I painted it blue. You can do that, or I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna take a white canvas board because you all have a white canvas board. You can either paint it blue and let it dry and then do the other paintings, 
But for today, what we're going to do is we're going to try to paint just a little scene right here below the bridge, okay? And see if we can come up with that, that uh, painting. So let's, instead of making it tall like this, let's put it on its side because we're going to paint the bottom part of the painting, right? So there you go. And um, we're going to take these acrylic paint tubes, see? So I'm going to take, so Monet generally worked with oils. He didn't work with acrylics. He worked with oils and oil pastels. You guys have oil pastels, right? So let's see, he, he would take the paint from the tube and he would directly lay it on, lay it on. See, I just, from the tube, I laid it on and now I'm going to take my brush, or rather my largest brush in your kit, and I'm going to just spread it every which way, okay? Like this, like this. So a cross hatch type. And then now you see that there's a lot of greens in there. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of the yellow color. What did I say before? Oh, the way you open the tubes is you see how when you unscrew the cap, you unscrew the cap, you make your uh, cap go upside down and poke it. Voila, and your uh, painting is, uh, the paint tube is open. I'll just put a little bit of yellow there. Then I'll close this. And I'm gonna put this on and it becomes green. How did that happen? That's pretty cool, isn't it? It became green. Look at that. So just paint it green, paint it a little bit yellow. Just put it vertically, horizontally, whatever, you know? And we're going to develop this painting over, I mean, even though we're going to develop it in like one sitting, but he used to paint it in very many layers. Okay, so here we go. We have a little bit of green. Then if you look at your tubes again, right here, we have, sorry, we have another green. See this green? I'm just going to poke it. Poke a hole and voila, it opens up. And I'm going to paint a little bit. This is a, and I put some green. Oh, that's too much. I don't like it at all. See, I don't see, do you see this color on your painting? No. So I'm going to make it lighter. So I'm going to close that tube and anyway, now that I've applied it, I'm going to just use it. You see that? The nice thing about acrylic paints is that it dries fast. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I want to paint the bottom part of it. And just leave it like that. Get some white. I'm going to open it, put some white, too much white, oops, and it's, that's all right. So just give it like a little bit of texture, give it an impression, drag it up and down, give it an impression, and so forth, okay? And then I'm going to take a little bit of the black. Just 
just a tad bit of the black, put it down here. Because in your in this painting, we see a little bit of black. Okay. Now you see there's a little bit of purple right there, right? So what we are going to do is to make the purple. Either you can use your purple from the tube. This is a purple. I'm wearing a purple and there's a purple tube. So let's put a little impression of purple in there. And don't be afraid. When you paint, don't be afraid that you're going to make a mistake. You can always paint over it. And remember, you, you want to develop this painting in layers. So you can just, you know, this is like a painting of, you know, we're not painting the sky. We're only painting just the pond. So we want to give it, if you want to give reflections of things above, you just, Paint it, vertical, cross hash it, vertical, cross hash it. We use a different brush maybe. This is a wet brush. So what I'll do is I'm gonna use a dryer brush. Let's see what that does, okay? So here's a dry brush. Let's try the pan brush. This pan brush, and I'm going to just do this. Then do that. Do this, do that, do this, do that. Scumble. See? It looks like there's something going on over there. And then he did this a lot. So that's how you you can, you know, when he didn't, I don't think he used a fan brush as much, but I was just thinking, why not? Why not use a fan brush, right? Because we have it. So there, and now I'm gonna wash this, put this away, put it in water. I'm gonna take another, um, another brush, say a round brush like this, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to create an impression of um, of these water lily, uh, water lily things, okay? Water, uh, the lily pads. So let's see, what are the predominant colors? There's a yellowish, there's a little green. So I'm gonna put it in my little palette, right, this one, okay? This little flower palette. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, Ultramarine blue, right here, here's the blue. Put it in a separate thing, and then just kind of mix it up. So on this little palette, I'm gonna take the blue and the, uh, and the yellow, mix it up, make, make it a green, see? Let me see if you can see this, ah, there it is. So you take a little blue and a little yellow and mix it up and it becomes a green. See that dirty green? That's what we want. This is too bright, so I'm gonna paint it a dirty green. Or you could do it right on the canvas. Let's do it on the canvas. Take the yellow, put a little bit of dotted yellow, okay? And then take a little bit of the blue, mix it right on the canvas. See what happens. So take another dry brush, take this brush right here, and then mix it up. See, it's a different layer. It's a little bit of a dirty green. It's this like this.
green from your acrylic paint, and then leave some portions where uh, they they stick up. So they are like you know, um, they are blobs of paint. It gives you like um, texture in your painting. Okay, so let's leave it like that. Not going to worry about it too much. And let's put a little bit of ochre. This is a different type of yellow ochre right there. Okay, I just put it in and I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna do that. So I would like for this to sort of, you know, uh, develop more layers, more layers. And I would, and then what I'll do is now, I'm going to introduce with a dry brush, take a really dry brush. This one. Take a dry brush, this one, or maybe a mop brush. How about, let's take a mop brush. See this mop, it's like a mop, right? It has a, it's like a, it's like a little mop. So I'm gonna make like little marks on it. So just, Make impressions of, you see? Make impressions of, oh, there are some lily pads going on over there. Oh, there you go. Lots of, there's something there, looks like it. So I'm just making an impression of some lily pads. Let's see over here in this painting. So I'm just gonna make little marks little marks here. So when you when you paint, don't make everything symmetrical. Like, don't, don't make it such that if you're doing something here that you have to do something here. No, make it random. Because nature is random, right? So you just go like so. It's all random. And then I'm taking my mop brush, I'm going to dry it. Okay, with a little paper towel, you can just wipe off the paint and then do this little hashtag type of thing. You know, let's go up and down, go this way, go up and down, go this way, same thing, just kind of, you know, not too much, don't mess it up. Yeah, you can mess, I mean, you, you even if you mess it, remember, People, when, when they saw Monet painting, they thought, oh my God, what a mess. They would say, what a mess. But then it turned out, it turned out amazing. It turned out beautiful. So that's what you want to do. Just believe in your, yourself and keep painting. So over here, there are some shrubs over here. I will put a little bit of black in there just to make it darker because there are some reflections of like weeds and things. So I'm going to make it, the chroma is So just with the mop brush. And then let's see, he's just doing this. So basically it's an impressionistic painting. all of you because there's too much silence in here 
I'm going to unmute you and um, let's see. Guys, uh, what do you think? Should we uh, should we put some water lily pads in here? Yes. How do you think I would want to put some water lily pads? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different brush, a uh, clean brush, and I'm going to mix up some. Uh, see this brush right here? I'm going to use that. And I'm going to mix up some red and white. Okay, here's some red. And let's put in some white and some blue. Make a little tiny, teeny tiny amount of pinks. We love these little pinks. Okay, so let's put in some water lilies. So if you were to draw like him, he's looking from here. So the water lilies appeared larger here. And make it random. Okay, and then like as you go up, just they became very, very, very tiny as they go up. Okay, just like add some impressions of water lilies. So it's an illusion. Remember, I all I think that he's a master illusionist. He just loved to do this. Fooled people's eyes by creating an impression of things that you are going to call water lilies, okay? So that's just an illusion. I think he was brilliant at that. So yeah, you could even do like some things like, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the thing, just add that, there you go. And you can develop this painting over over a period of time. So wait for it to dry a little and then create some more. See over here it's more pronounced because you know it's closer to the eye. Right here, it was closer to him. So the things were would appear to be like bigger because it's closer to you. Okay. Whatever. And put some water lilies there. So what did I do? I'm not drawing like water lilies like this. Like you can actually take a a, a, a brush like that and just put water lilies where they seem like water lilies but you're just giving them an impression of a water lily it's not quite a water lily there you go and so you can develop this further by um taking a brush right across very thin brushes so it gives you some movement don't be afraid sort of you know go over your vertical lines like that maybe i would want to introduce some blues in there let's see I might want to introduce some blues, so I'm going to put that in here. And let's introduce some blues into the purple. Like 
mix a little bit of white with the blue, then you get a little uh, something sort of like this. Too light, so I'll add a little bit more blue in there. See? And you're developing it over layers. So, so you make these marks. Don't be afraid to put some marks there, put some blues. So if you put, see the blue near the pink, it gets more like, you know, you can see that it's brighter, right? So I'm just gonna lay these down, lay these down like so. And then I'll, I'll destroy it. Okay. Draw these little horizontal things, which, which shows that, okay, there's water there. Per, perhaps there's water there. But then because it's a reflection, I'm going to destroy it now. Are you guys having fun doing this? So liberating. Yes. This is so liberating. Okay, so now I'm going to take this really. Okay, I'm going to take this brush right here, and it's a dry brush. So I'm just going to do this. Okay. What is she doing? I don't know. What is she doing? Look at that, he's destroying the painting. But that's what impressionism, I mean, he, you know, one of the stories I wanna tell you is about when he had this cataract and he couldn't see colors, he still painted a lot, he painted a lot, but then he destroyed a lot of the painting. Colors were not right because he knew what the colors were, but he couldn't see it very well. So what he did was he destroyed a lot of the painting. Some of those paintings have been uh, recovered, like in a recovered in the sense. Some of those paintings were kept from being destroyed by Monet. So they had some of the undestroyed, paintings, but they have a reddish tinge to it. Um, you know, it's very interesting. <laughs> These are the kind of ones where you have to use like the top of the ah. thing that has a thing on it. You want some there? Uh, I don't know where the paper towels went. I was going to say, do you want some of the wipe off brushes? Well, it dries really quickly. Okay. So it's probably dried on that brush. Okay. Uh, blue. Are you still in class? Yep. So I will wait for this to dry and then I will put in some more uh, water lilies in here and do some scumbling and uh, you know, cross hatching type of technique and finish the painting later. Okay. Questions, anybody? So one thing that you have to do with your uh, paintbrushes is that you have to take care of them. Okay, here's my painting. All right, let me go wash my hands so that I don't get paint on my computer. मैं तो कुछ भी नहीं कर रही मैं तो खाली बैठी हुई देख रही हूँ. अच्छा है. मैं कर रही हूँ तो मैस कर रही हूँ. मैंने कहा चलो आज मैं सी कर लेती हूँ ओके 
Okay, I'm back. So, did you enjoy a uh, painting like Monet? When it was a master, I can't come. Like I, I would uh, be nothing. You know, but we're just finally giving an illusion of what might be a little piece of that painting. So uh, he did it in oils. It's very easy. You know, it's nice to do it in oils. But one thing I was, uh, I want to leave you with is that your brushes, you need to clean them up. Okay, I'm gonna unmute all of you. And um, what you want to do is that you want to clean your brushes right away. Because if you don't, if you keep paint on your brushes and they dry, they will destroy the bristles. And then, I mean, don't throw them away because you can use these crappy brushes for different um, paint jobs. So don't be don't away your brushes, okay? And if you want your brushes to be there for a long time, you really need to take care of them. So wash them um, with water, then put some soap, clean them up, and then wash it again and dry it. Okay? That's how you need to take care of your brushes. Otherwise, uh, if you paint on the brushes, they will get dried on them, and then your brush bristles will get destroyed. Okay? All right. Thank you so much for joining me, and I love having you all over. Take care. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you, Aisha. Welcome. Thank you. I just Look at, just look at my painting. Huh? Let me see your paintings. Go ahead. Show me your painting. I didn't do anything. Oh wow! Wow! That's so, nice. Game. That's I was nice. going for like mixing a little bit of green into the blue to make it look <laughs> nice. It's not. It didn't come out right, but it's okay. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Keep doing it. You yeah, know, you can. Uh, that's very nice, Jared. Very nice. Keep I always think that when I when it's like off to the side like this, where I think I need to move it more that way. When I actually need to move it that way, like that. <laughs> I keep actually doing that, and it's just hilarious. I know. Honestly. Abigail, let's see yours. Do you have something to show us? There you go. Gorgeous. Good for you. I really like proud types of tubes of paint where you just where you don't have to have it open until you actually first need to use it. Yeah. And also the on the top is so start? tiny because you can just poke it with this. Yep. Dolly, you want to show me? Hey, work on work on your painting for a little bit. I know. Okay. I'll probably come back to in a few minutes. Okay. First, I'll Thank show you, you the broken, like, broken Thank track. you, everybody. And Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh,